Mark chapter 2. If you are our guest, we're glad that you're here. And uh, though I saw a lot of motorcycles out in the parking lot. God bless every one of you. Lord, I pray that you'll bless all of our, our biker friends. Lord, it's good to have friends that are bikers. And Lord, I pray that you keep them safe this season. Bless them, use them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Uh, ben Dunkel's uh, motorcycle group uh, club is here today. You'll see them with their vest. And I hope that you'll get to know them. It, I saw a lot of motorcycles outside. Uh, I think next year when we do this, we should do what we've done in the past and bring them all into the altar. And uh, no, we've done that. If you, don't, if you remember, remember that day, we filled the whole altar with motorcycles, but we just didn't know where we'd do it a little early in the season, what that would look like. But uh, please see Ben or Jerry Quinn. Jerry is here as well. He's a chapter president. And uh, if you're a biker and you want to get to know some good Christian bikers, go ahead and uh, meet them. Maybe you want to join. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. Are you there? <clears throat> if you don't have a Bible, it's up on the screen for you. You can follow me along there. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors, there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Were you, how many of you were here when uh, Tim Shorey fixed it up that we let somebody down through the balcony over here? You remember that? I was preaching, then sawdust fell down on my head, and we used a pulley system and let a man down out of the balcony, and that was kind of fun. Um, risky, but fun. We didn't do it again. We felt like we had dodged one <laughs> right there. Seeing their faith in verse 5, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I'll prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. And Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, hallelujah, grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunning, through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Amen. How many of you want to have that experience? And you I've never seen anything like this before. I want to talk to you about a ride or die. Lord, I thank you for your word. May you divide it to every person that's live and online. And speak to every Sunday, every person is our heart, Lord. Let everybody receive something today. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. You can be seated. Thanks for standing for a while. <clears throat> As you're seated, I want to take a moment to recognize uh, some friends of ours, Bishop Jeff and Lilani Williams from Providence, Rhode Island, have joined us together today. Would you let the Williams know they're new friends? They're our old friends. But uh, I'm so glad uh, Bishop Williams, Dr. Williams, is the chairman of the board at the Faith Bible College International, and so they joined us for graduation weekend. And I asked Bishop Williams, would you just stay over Sunday night and preach to our people on Sunday night? And he said he would do that. I'm going to tell you what, you will never, ever regret or forget what you hear tonight with Bishop Williams. Bishop Williams and Lalani, would you please stand? I just want the folks to see our friends. Well, we'll have two of them, and I want them to see you. Amen. Bless you guys. Belly button right there. You got it. You got it. They don't do that in Providence. They shoot each other in Providence. They <laughs> Stick them up is what they say in Providence. That's how they take their offerings at their church. <laughs> uh, they pastor a great church, King's Cathedral, a great church. We've had the privilege to be there with them, and I love these folks. Glad that so you want to be here tonight, 6 o'clock. Every Sunday night we gather, but tonight's going to be better. We don't live stream the Sunday night service. I give the online team, the media team, Sunday night off, and we just have the best time on Sunday night. This is what I want you to see, know, feel, and do today. I want you to see the necessity of friends. I want you to know that friends bring supernatural favor. I want you to feel like God's house is a great place to find a friend, and what I want you to do is make Jesus Christ the best friend of your life. Before I'm done with our time today, you're going to get the same invitation that 
We give every Sunday that hundreds of people around you have responded to, and that was the genesis, the beginning of a God-changed life. You see these motorcycles that are here today, and I think there's some in the foyer maybe, and uh, these are, they, I may just ask the church to buy these and just use these on the stage for the rest of my life because I've never felt better than I do right now. And I asked Ethan if he would just take a spin around the auditorium if it got boring just to wake you all up. And uh, he said he's up for it. So uh, be ready, be ready. A ride or die. It was on May the 23rd, 1934 in the backwoods of Louisiana that Bonnie Parker and Clyde Burrow uh, had ended a string of robberies and it was out of their story of, as refugees from, uh, 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 running from the law that they came, this term was, was coined to ride or die, meaning I'm with you no matter what happens. And for them, it did end in death. But since then, many motorcycle clubs have picked up that phrase. They've used it on their patches, their clothing, their branding. And it is, in essence, if you get in our club, we're not just here for the good times. We're here anytime. When I was thinking about today and, and our desire to try to communicate a very important subject and something that's dear to your hearts because you have come as a guest invited by a friend, I don't know anybody in the Bible that would exemplify and illustrate the concept of ride or die than these four friends of a once paralyzed man. For this man was living in one sense, but had already died in several others. Part of his body had died. He couldn't walk. The ripple effect of that problem in his body became the fact that he, his hopes for the future had died. His hopes for what he wanted to do for vocation had died. His hopes to be able to do the things that all of his friends were doing had died. In fact, in that day, church was not like church is today, but he couldn't even serve in church and many times couldn't even attend church. Do you realize that there are people that you and I know, and maybe they're watching online, that would love to go to church, but they feel like because of a spiritual or some kind of thing in their past problem, they don't even dare to come into church. Why, we're like, everybody's welcome. But this guy could have never have ever gotten himself into the presence of God. That's what good friends do. Real friends bring their friends to the presence of Jesus Christ. And if it wasn't for these friends, this once paralyzed man would have died in that same condition. His one problem produced death in many areas, but one encounter with Jesus brought life to every single one of those. But none of this story would have ever been known. He'd have been another beggar, homeless, died anonymously without anybody ever hearing about him. But what's the difference? Friends in Jesus. And I don't know if you're going through a death in a marriage, the death in a relationship, a death in a job, a death in a business, a death in a ministry, but I'm here to tell you today, if you can just get a few friends to get you to Jesus Christ, I declare to you today, there's nothing that you have lost that God cannot restore and put back in your life. And if you've experienced that, give him praise today. Come on, be a testimony. If he can do it for them, he can do it for anyone. So if I brought this once paralyzed man to church today and he walked onto the stage, what would he say? Did you hear John and Sarah today? They were once paralyzed in these areas of their life. But because they met Dalton, I had to be careful. I wanted to get on my knees and start worshiping Dalton. I just, oh, hey, 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 Dalton, Dalton, Dalton. Give me a D. Give me an A. No. <laughs> Dalton, Dalton, Dalton. Do the wave across the auditorium. But last Sunday morning, I don't know why I was thinking about it, but God said, who are the three people that have never walked out of your life? Quickly, I said, my wife, I said, Dalton Dunphy, and Walter Young. At the end of the service last week, you have no idea, but I felt led to have Walter come up and pray for us. 
and he immediately started praying for me. That's the kind of people in your life that though they don't even know you need it, that will come into your life. So none of, nobody in this place is so spiritual that you don't need a ride or die friend. What would that once paralyzed man say? Well, they want me to get to the point. Okay. <laughs> you need, apparently you need friends in the media room to just kind of help you move along. No, they're trying to stay with me, so you get one point. <laughs> the paralyzed man would say, you need ride or die friends. There's going to come a time in everybody's life, you're going to need somebody to carry you. There's going to be time in your life, you're going to need to borrow some prayer from somebody. There's going to be time in your life, you're going to need somebody to put you along, give you a, a short-term loan on faith. There's going to come a time in your life that you'll be desperate for somebody to speak something encouraging into your life. I believe, again, we say around here, every Sunday, every person. Because I have the conviction that there is every Sunday somebody walking off that parking lot into this auditorium or to the kids' area or to the youth area that desperately needs to encounter God. But they can't do it on their own. They can't do it at their house. They can't do it on the road. They can't do it online. But they need to get around somebody that they can borrow some hope from. How many have ever needed somebody you could borrow some encouragement from? I just need a little help from somebody to get through this season of my life. And so in that meeting where this paralyzed man was, I want to talk to you about who was there. Number one, there were walkers and carriers. Say that with me, walkers and carriers. Let's talk about the walkers. The walkers, the house that Jesus was in was packed. They didn't have Uber or Harleys, so they walked to church. They walked in. They had no vision for anything else but to walk. In fact, I wonder, think, how many of the people in that service walked by the paralyzed man? They're just focused on where they're going. They're just focused on what they'll see. They're not, they, don't, they don't see. They got blinders. They literally don't see anybody else in life. But then there were carriers. I'm going to tell you today in this church, I know it, I've been around it for a while. For 100 years as we celebrate this year, 100th anniversary, this church is full of carriers. While all the walkers were walking by the paralyzed man, there were four. It don't take everybody, but four people said, we're not walkers, we're carriers. We have time. We have concern. We will see you where you're at. And I know that you can't get to where you're going without our help, and we could get there without you, but we don't want to get there if you're not going there. We have been given legs because you don't have legs. Come on, somebody. We've been given strength because you don't have any. We've been given access because you don't get any, but because of us. We're not going to be walkers. How many want to be a carrier? I always want to have strength, and I always want to have the vision to say, is there somebody I can carry on my way to Jesus? The church is a place that carries wounded, broken people. May you understand, that's not only for us as a church, but you as a guest. People say, I don't need to go to church. Yeah, you do. Because eventually you're going to need somebody to carry you. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 17, a friend is always loyal. If you come to me and say, I heard somebody say this about you, you know what my question is going to be? What did you say then? There's no shortage of reporters. You know, so-and-so said this about you. I don't care what they said about me. What I want to know is what did you say? What did your head do? I don't need bobbleheads in my life. Come on, somebody. We need bodyguards. I always quote that. But a brother is born to help in a time of need. Walkers will walk in and out of your life, and that's okay. But carriers are not built for the high times. Carriers are built for when you can't carry your own burden. Bear ye one another's burdens. 
If we want the Holy Spirit to flow in the mighty gifts of the Spirit, it won't flow because we got our songs just right, the air conditions tweaked perfectly, and the lights are on point. The Spirit of God will flow in imperfect circumstances when we have a heart not to be a walker, but to be a carrier. I saw a couple here, there in the balcony, uh, ride, rode their motorcycle here, and beautiful day to ride. I said, you're welcome. I gave you a wonderful day to ride. <laughs> I get blamed for other things. I can take some credit for things I have nothing to do with. He said, I bought this motorcycle for my grandfather, opened up the side bag, and picked up, took up a, a black and white picture of his grandfather. He says, I carry my grandfather with me everywhere I go. You know what? That's the chief job of the church. Not to make big money, not to build big crowds, not to make a political statement. We are built to carry people who cannot get there on their own. That's what these kingdom builder ministries are about. That's what the food pantry is all about. 850 pe- families, 850 families given groceries twice a month, hundreds of dollars of groceries, cars lined up down the street. Why? Because the church isn't just to talk the talk, we're to carry the burden. There are walkers and carriers. There are sitters and climbers. For in that meeting, there were people that were happy to just sit and listen. Sitting in their comfort. Sitting in their mindset. Sitting in their excuses. Sitting in their selfishness. Sitting in their little circle. Sitting in their own um, uh, selfishness, sitting in laziness, sitting in hurt. I don't know how the guy can preach and make everybody mad and happy at the same time, but it's a gift. But this church has not been built and is not filled with a bunch of sitters. It's filled with a bunch of climbers. Because while the people were sitting on the floor, there were some climbers going to the roof. When we begin to understand that climbers are people who are not satisfied with sitting, but we are saying we want to take people higher. The previous generation's uh, ceiling should be our generation's floor. I want to be a climber. First Thessalonians 5.11, listen to what he says. So encourage each other. Build each other up just as you are already doing. Say this with me. I'm a carrier. Say this with me. I'm a climber. In that meeting, there were hearers and doers. The people were hearing the message. The people were hearing what could be done. The people are hearing what Jesus could do. But then there were four guys that were saying, I'm not satisfied to hear it. I want to do something with it. Ecclesiastes 4. Two people are better off than one. For they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a three triple braided cord is not easily broken. There are walkers and carriers. Sitters and climbers, hearers and doers. Lastly, there are whiners and winners. Over here are the religious jerks. How many know there's no medical cure for jerk? So, that's good. See, these people have heard these jokes a thousand times. I like it when guests come in. I get to reuse good material. The whiners are over here. Well, I don't like this, and I don't like that. Hello. Whiners have their Facebook po- post ready. <laughs> I can just hear Edith Bunker the whole time when I listen to some people. Well, I guess it's more like Homer's wife, but. I don't like this, and I don't like that, and they didn't put enough sugar in my coffee and Dunkin' Donuts. That's more like Marge, I guess, not, not either. And hey, Homer, can you believe it? And when you go home and the husband's like, can you learn that sermon? And he wore jeans on the platform. And I don't like the pastor. The pastor don't like me. The pastor don't like me. He didn't take my hand.
No, that man didn't need a whiner. That man needed a winner. And the winners say, we know you're down. The winners say, we know you're hurting. But the winners say, we're going to get you to Jesus. Hallelujah. The way you are is not the way you have to stay. I know you're hurting. I know you're backed up. But I'm going to tell you right now, get up in the name of Jesus. There's hope for you. I know the world wants to cancel you, but Christ is calling you. What good is our message if all we do is criticize people? Let's use our message to lift people. The hammer has two sides. With one, you can tear down, and with the other, you can build up. How many want to be a builder-upper in Jesus' name? I think the once paralyzed man would not only say, you need ride-or-die friends, but he would say, your ride-or-die friends matter. It's a good thing that this man met some carriers, climbers, doers, and winners. And today, I tell you, in the name of Jesus, this church will continue to reach out across the state of Maine. I'll tell you about the church in Kennebunk when I got time to tell you the whole story. It is absolute. It'll blow your socks off. It'll blow the hair off your head. <laughs> Some of you have already heard it. I can, all right, that's. <sighs> you got to get the right people. Somebody say, I need the right people. You need, who you hang around with matters. George Burns, who lived to be 100, said the secret of a long and happy life are friends. Gracie Allen, his wife, died after 38 years of marriage. Jack Benny was his friend for 55 years. I love what he said, and I quote, Jack never walked out on me while I sang a song, and I never walked out on him while he played the violin. Isn't that beautiful? How many of you got a friend that you'd never walk out on and you know would never walk out on you? That's a friend. Listen to me. And all the stats prove what I'm about to tell you. Your current level of income will reflect your five closest friends. How many want some richer friends? <laughs> It's true, though. Proverbs 13, 20, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. That's why I took Facebook off my phone. Some of y'all are taking me down. Not you, them. <laughs> you need to get around the right people. Some people are so desperate, they'll take anybody as a friend. But you have no idea. That's how the devil destroys a life. How many people do you know that used to serve God, used to be in victory, but now their life is a train wreck, and it all begins with, I met this guy. I met this girl. And instead of swiping right, you should have just shut it off. Proverbs 27, 19. A mirror reflects a man's face. But what he's really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to challenge you with this today. Your company will shape your character. Your character will shape your conduct. Your conduct will shape your destiny. Can I slow down just a minute? The right friends. Sometimes the right friends are not the richest friends or the best-looking friends or even the most convenient friends. In fact, I found out many times in life some of the most convenient people in a person's life can be the most corruptive. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. You have to intentionally find the right friends. Your company will form your character your character will form your conduct. Your conduct will form your destiny. One more time. Your company will affect your character. Your character will form your conduct. Your conduct will determine your destiny. Why did God put Dalton in John and Sarah's life? Because God wanted a different destiny. Talk to the paralyzed man. He would tell you, not everybody, I didn't need everybody to carry me, but I needed some people who could carry me. 
You don't need 100 friends. You just need the right ones. Proverbs 27, verse 5. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. If you don't have somebody in your life to say, that's stupid, you need somebody to say, that's stupid. I know that some people that go to some churches don't have friends because if they had, their friends would say, you really can't sing. How do people get on American Idol, America's Got Talent, and do what they do? They do it because they don't have friends. <laughs> Honesty is a steroid for good relationships. How many of you ever had somebody correct you and it saved your life? Go ahead and raise your hand. They, they correct you and it saved your life. Amen. 2 Corinthians seven sixteen. Paul said, it makes me really glad to know that I can depend on you. If you want, I believe Jesus can change your life. But please lean in and let the Holy Spirit speak to you today. Come on, musicians, if you would. If you want your, if you don't like, please lean in. If you don't like the direction you're riding right now, if you don't like the direction you're going, you can start the change today by changing who you ride with. Can we talk about real change? Can we talk about real life altering experiences? There's no way. The Bible says bad company corrupts. Bad communication corrupts people. You cannot dance with the devil without having the devil's damage done. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be fooled by those who say such things, for a bad company corrupts good character. How many of you know when your kids start hanging around with certain kids? Well, if bad can corrupt good, how many are glad good can encourage hurting people? Come on, somebody. All you got to do is get around one, two, three, or four good friends. Listen to me. And your life can change forever. This place is full of dynamic people. Real people. Can I brag on this church for a minute? It's the best church I've ever gone to. No, I mean that. I've never gone to another church. <laughs> we started coming here when I was seven. My wife came here in her, in her mother's womb. We've never known anything different. And I thank God for a church. Can I get personal about it? Before I ever had the privilege to lead this church, the greatest privilege was to be a part of it. For it was right there that we said goodbye to my mom when she died at the age of 42. It was in this place that my brother died of, that, not in, but my brother that died of a drug overdose in 2012. It was in these altars that my little brother Joey gave his life to Christ and got on a path. So on this stage, my wife and I got married. I couldn't have done any better, and she couldn't have done any worse. Guys, if you try that line, be very careful right there. Your life could come to an abrupt end right there. I almost missed it right there. You, saw, you felt me hit. We dedicated our children here. Two weekends ago, Micah got married up here. Would somebody please pray for my wife? I'm getting... She's a mess. <laughs> Would somebody lift her up in Jesus' name? <laughs> That's my job. Wearing me out. <laughs> I'm buying stock in Kleenex. I'm going to tell you right now. There's got to be a drug for this. <laughs> I'm almost changing my stance on drinking just for a minute. <laughs> Back to the message. Dedicator, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying as an experience, I'm going to tell you the Jesus Christ saved my soul, but Charleston Church saved my life. Can I testify? You got your own testimony. I got mine. That's all I can share. 
but my mom and dad were first generation Christians. They came from some very difficult upbringings, but Jesus Christ used Sky Burl to be a friend of my dad. Jesus used Dalton to be a friend of Sky Burl. My dad came to Jesus, my mom came to Jesus. Our lives were not perfect in our upbringing, but I can tell you one thing was perfect. They brought me to church, they kept me in church, and they kept me in one church, and here I am today to tell you, without Jesus, I'd go to hell, but without Charleston, I'd be in jail. But I'm here to tell you that both of them together can change your life. I thank God for the church. Come on, if you're thankful, give him praise to Jesus and his church. He'll save your soul and rescue your life. Come on, give him praise today. Come on, give him praise today. And thank God for some friends. They didn't leave you down, but they picked you up and say there's something better. There's a better future in store for you. In Jesus' name. Stand with me, everybody stand with me. I haven't the time to finish the message. But I do have time to tell you the best news of what I'm gonna give you today. And if nobody would leave the building, it would be order of the house. Because somebody's life is about to go from the paralyzed mat to a life of victory. Carriers, somebody say that. Carriers, climbers, doers, winners. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. For Jesus personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we could be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. I can't carry your sins. Your friends can't carry that problem that you that separates you from God. In fact, I can't heal you, and nobody in this place can heal you. But how many are glad I know a man who can? His name is Jesus. You've never had a friend until you've had the friend named Jesus. How many of you want to be a better friend? Just go ahead and raise your hand. I want to raise my hand. I want to be a better friend. You want to know how to be a better friend? Become acquainted with the greatest friend of all for he carries how many glad he carried your sins so you don't have to carry them anymore look around this place there are a lot of people that are imperfect but the only thing that keeps us on the right track and on not going to hell is that we recognize that it was Jesus who carried our sins on that cross so that we don't have to carry them in this life how many, are glad, how many can remember a day that you asked Jesus Christ to carry your sins and you're glad for it? Raise a hand and thank God today. My sins have been carried away. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. My sins are carried away. Hallelujah. I said, your sins have been carried away. Number two, he climbed. John chapter 1, verse 51. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, you'll see all the heaven open up and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Jesus climbed when he died on that cross and was buried in the grave and rose from the dead. By the way, we don't have blind faith. We have faith with absolute facts and evidence. You have to be blind not to believe the gospel. He rose from the dead. Guess what happened? He climbed and made a way so that I don't have to go to you to talk to God. You don't have to go to a priest to talk to God. You can talk to God all on your own. How many glad you've got instant access? You've got a signal with heaven all the time. That's because he climbed for you. He's a doer, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Please hear this. If you're in this place and you've never accepted Christ, I want you to know God was working on your behalf 2,000 years ago. Imagine somebody dying for you that you've never even met before. 
That's the kind of friend Jesus is. And lastly, Jesus is the winner for you. John 16, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Maybe you're here like John and Sarah, and you say, Pastor, I just honestly don't have peace. <laughs> Guess what? He's already got peace for you today. Here on earth, you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus is your carrier, your climber, your doer, and Jesus is the winner. We have this statement you'll find around here as you come back, because I know you want to. We help people win. Why? Because Jesus helps people win. It's not a cliche. It's a Christian scriptural reality. This Bible says that you and I were born separated from God. Our sin kept us from Him. His standard will never be lowered. But because he loves you more than the sin that separates you from him, he had to send a sufficient sacrifice to pay the penalty. There has to be judgment. There has to be spanking for the sins of mankind. But guess what? Jesus took the punishment. How many glad today you don't have to bear the punishment for your sins? How many glad for that today? Jesus took the pain. Jesus did the time. Jesus paid the fine. Bible says, this Bible, this miracle letter from heaven says that you were born separated from God, that Jesus died for your sins. And number three, it says, if you'll repent of your sins, if you say, Lord, I'm sorry, I take responsibility for myself, guess what? At that moment, not in a time, not after classes, not after you give money, not after you make membership, but in that moment, guess what? You're as clean as anybody on the planet has ever been, and you are born again. I want every person to raise their hand and say, I know today 100% pastor. I've been thinking about it much, but I know that if I were to die today, my last breath here would be just before my first breath in heaven. Would you be bold? Be a testimony. Slip your hand up in the air and say, that's me. Nice and high. Nice and high. That's me. I'm going to heaven. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Jesus, with that hand up in the air. I'm going to ride until I die. But everybody couldn't raise their hands. You've had a friend that loves you enough to do something so important. You are like that paralyzed person. You can't get anywhere spiritually, but your friend has brought you to Jesus. Jesus wants to forgive your sins and give you back your life and restore you and put you on the path for which he put you on planet Earth for. So when I count to three, I'm going to ask you to say, I'm going to give you this opportunity to receive Christ in your life. When I count to three, you say, Pastor, I recognize that God brought me here. And I recognize that God wants to come into my life and he wants to forgive me of all my sins. And I want to be in his family. We're not even talking about church yet. We're just talking about you getting right with God. Lord, I pray as this invitation is given, Holy Spirit, I've done everything humanly I can do. I cannot do any more. But God, you, can speak this to the hearts and minds of men, women, young people, old people. Time is of the essence. Would you speak to them now in Jesus' name?